Welcome everyone. Let's begin our lesson for today by going over the learning goals and success criteria. First, what are we learning? We're learning how to find the real roots of real numbers and how to find the complex roots of real and complex numbers, as well as how to recognize closure of number sets within the number system under mathematical operations. How are we learning it? Through the complex roots and closure notes and the complex roots and closure assignment. When can we use this information? To determine the amount of voltage being used in your house at different times of the year, and to perform simple calculations such as a budget by recognizing boundaries of numbers to determine if adding the items in your budget will stay within your income amount. How do we know we learned it? By getting a score of four on the complex roots and closure assignment. Now let's take a look at our agenda for today. We will begin by going over the learning goals and success criteria. While we do that, you'll fill out your get it started. Once you've completed your get it started, we'll go over it together and answer any questions that you may have. After that, we'll go over the complex roots and closure notes, and then I'll give you time to complete the complex roots and closure assignment on Desmos. Once you've completed the assignment, we'll go over it together and answer any questions that you may have. At the end of class, we'll go back over our learning goals and success criteria while you fill out your before you go. Your only homework for tonight is to continue working on the reasoning with complex number study guide and any incomplete assignments that you may have. Let's take a look now at the complex roots and closure notes. The notes begin with the learning goals and success criteria. So understanding the roots of numbers. So if I were to ask you, what is the square root of four? Most of you would say square root of four is two. But we forget sometimes that there are two roots. Anytime we're taking the second root, there's gotta be two roots that exist. So we have negative two and positive two because negative two times negative two is equal to four as well. So we have negative two and positive two are the square roots of four. So if I were to give you negative, so if I were to ask you what are the square roots of negative four? Well, we know that any negative turns out to be i, so this is really four i here, so we can take the square root of that and we get two i. We have the square root of negative 25, which is just five i. Square root of 17, we leave it as square root of 17 because there is no perfect square root of 17. We just pull the i out front. So it becomes i times the square root of 17. Now here, we have square root of 169. Well, we know that the square root of 169 is 13, but it should be positive or negative. So this is 13 and negative 13. Then we have the cube root of negative 8. Now notice cube root, we can, we can have a positive value because we can have negative two times negative two times negative two, which stays negative. So here we have negative two as our cube root. The fourth root of 16, we should notice is two and it's plus or minus two. So that means positive two or negative two. So here we have the fourth root of 16 again. We know that the answer is negative two and positive two. We just came up with that. But well, what we no need to notice is there's a fourth root, which means there's got to be four roots, and we only have two of them. So here's our little meme that says, oh, how cute. He has an imaginary friend because he has the square root of negative one here. So the other two roots do exist, but they must be imaginary. So we have our two roots, and if we graph those on the coordinate plane, we're going to draw our circle with the radius equal to the real root, which is two. So our radius here is two. And we're gonna cut this into four equal parts. So I divide 360, because a circle is 360 degrees. I divide that by the number of roots, which in this case is four. So I have here, and then 360 divided by four is 90. So every 90 degrees, I should have another line. So there's my breakup. I know that this one is here, this is two. This one here is one, two, but it's in the imaginary, so it's two i. This one here is one, two to the left, so this is negative two. And this one is negative two i. So those would be my roots for the fourth root of 16. Now what about this one? Cube root of 27. Well, I should notice that the cube root of 27 is three. Right, that's my real root because three times three times three is 27. So again, draw my circle with the radius of three. 
and then I cut it into three equal parts. So if I take 360 and divide it by three, I get 120. So I do it every 120 degrees. So here's one, here's another one, and then another 120 degrees is here. And then I'm gonna figure out where these are. So this is three. Now this one, I need to figure out what, it, what the value is. So I'm gonna do that by making a triangle here. I know if this is 120, that means that 180 minus 120 is 60, so this angle is 60 degrees. So I know then that this is 60, and I have a 30, 60, 90 triangle that comes to the x-axis here. So I should notice then, if this is supposed to be two, but it's actually three, then I have to divide that. So three divided by two is three over two. So that's my scale factor. So I'm going to multiply this. So this is 3 over 2 square root of 3. And this is 3 over 2. In this, or in this case, it would be negative 3 over 2. So this becomes negative 3 over 2 plus 3 over 2 square root of 3i. And here, I'm going to do the same thing. And in reality, it ends up being the exact same because this is still a 60 degree angle. So I don't have to do all the work twice. I just need to make sure that I still have the... Uh, So I just need to make sure I get my signs correct. This is negative and negative, so this would be negative 3 over 2 minus 3 over 2 square root of 3i. So these would be my three roots. So get one more example. We have the sixth root of 1. Well, we know that the sixth root of 1 is 1 and negative 1. So we go ahead and draw our circle. We have our radius of 1, and we cut it into six equal parts. So if we notice, we take 360 and divide it by 6, and we get 60. So each one of these angles is 60 degrees. So this is 60, this is 60, 60, and 60. We know that this is 1. So this is 1, and it's supposed to be 2 based on our angle of 60 degrees. So we need to figure out, so we take 1 and divide it by 2, and we get 1 half. That's our scale factor. So this side here will be 1 half, and this here will be 1 half square root of 3. So there's our values there. There's our root. We're going to do the same thing because this is also a 60 degree angle. All of these are 60 degree angles, so it's all going to be the same. We just got to change the signs. So this becomes negative 1 half and plus 1 half square root of 3, i. And then this one will be negative 1 because that's just right here. Same thing here, now it's negative and negative. So there's our negative and negative. This one will be positive and negative. So it's one half, and this will be minus one half square root of three i, and those would be our roots. Now closure definition, what does closure mean? Closure under an operation means a set is considered to be closed if when that operation is performed on any two elements within the set, the result is also in the set. Okay, note that this must be true for all elements in the set. If there is even one case where the result falls outside the set, then it is considered to be not closed. Okay, so let's take a look at what this means. So here's an example. We have the set of negative 1, 0, and 1, and want to know, is it closed under addition? So what that means is, I'm going to take each of these elements, so like negative 1 and 1, and when I add them together, I get 0, which is in the set. So that's, that means that the set might be closed. If for some reason though, I end up adding two numbers together and the result is outside the set. So let's say I add something together and I get six. Well, six is not in the set, so therefore it is not closed. So an example of what would make the set closed would be negative one plus one equals zero. Because zero is in the set, it looks like it might be closed. Now, is there an example we can come up with that makes it out of the set? Well, if we add 1 plus 1, because we do need to include it, it to plus itself, so 1 plus 1 equals 2, well, 2 is not in the set, therefore the set is not closed. And again, if there's even one example of this, so it doesn't matter that this part ended up inside the set. Because this one example is out of the set, then the whole set is not closed. So now let's take a look at this infinite set here the set S of integers, and what we want to know is it closed under addition. 
Now we can't use a table anymore, so we need to think of some examples of addition of integers and then try to broaden it and say, is there any way that any two integers can be added together and not be an integer? So we do some examples here and we can see that they're still turning out to be integers. So is there any way we can add two integers together and not get an integer? So is there, if I add any two negative integers, is there any way to get a fraction out of it? Is there any way to get a real number out of it? Is there any way to get uh, a complex number out of it? Well, no, there's not, right? Anytime I add any two whole numbers together, I should get another whole number. So therefore, there is no way to add two integers together without getting another integer, so therefore the set is closed. Now what about this? The set S of integers closed under division. So again, we're gonna think of some examples. So we have two divided by one, one divided by two. Notice here though, when we do one divided by two, we get one half. Well, one half is not an integer, that's a rational number. So therefore, when we do it that way, we know that it's not closed. Now, there's an easier way for us to be able to tell that this set is not closed. Because I told you if last time, if we include zero in the set, then it is never closed under division because it's undefined. So if we divide something by zero, it will always be undefined. So zero is an integer. So if we were to divide a set by zero, it would be undefined. So therefore, that previous set would not be closed because of division by zero. Now, what if we said the set of rationals excluding zero is closed under division? Well, again, we're going to think of some examples. So we have one half divided by one fourth is equal to two and negative one half divided by one third. Remember, really, it's just multiplying by the reciprocal. So is there any way we're gonna get something other than a rational number, other than a fraction? Well, we keep thinking of some examples, and when we keep looking, we can see that there is no, no way, and we did exclude zero, so we know that zero is not an issue, so we don't have to worry about dividing by zero, so therefore, we can just look at these examples and continue to come up with more examples, and we can see that the set is actually closed because no matter what, when I divide two fractions by each other, I will always get another fraction. Let's talk now about how to sign in to Desmos to complete your work. So what we're going to do is you're going to click on the link to go to the assignment and it should take you to a page that looks kind of like this. And right here where it says sign in with Google, we're going to click there. And it's going to pop up with our email accounts. You're going to click on your school email account and it should already have you logged in because you should have already been logged in using Google Classroom. From there, I'm just going to click start the activity and it will take me into the assignment and allow me to begin. So that's how you will log in to Desmos using Google. Let's take a look now at the complex roots and closure assignment. The assignment begins with our learning goals and success criteria. If we scroll down, there's a link here to take us to the Desmos activity. Go ahead and click on that link, and it should take us to a page that looks like this. We'll go ahead and click Start the Activity. The activity begins with the learning goals and success criteria. We'll go ahead and click Next. And for this one, it asks us to find the four fourth roots of 16. And we can see that this one here is two. We know that's one of them. Using this diagram, we can see that the second one is right here which is 2i, and then we have negative 2 and negative 2i. Those are our roots based on the diagram. And we'll go ahead and click Next, and we'll do the same thing for this one. Now we can see that this is, we're trying to find the cubic roots. The first one is 3, and this one here, we're going to have to use our trig functions a little bit. We should notice that in each of these, if we divide 360 by 3, we get 120. So if this whole thing is 120, and this from here to here is 180, that means that this is 60 degrees. So if this is 3, because it's a radius, so if this is 3, and this is 60 degrees, 
then this should be 3 over 2, and this should be 3 over 2 square root of 3. So we should have negative 3 over 2 plus, and this side we said was 3 over 2 times the square root of 3. So that should be our answer there. And this is i. And then we'll do the same thing for this one. This is also 60 degrees, and we'll figure out what that would be. And we'll click Next. And we'll do that for each of these. Then we're going to do some closure. So it says decide which under which operations the given set is closed. So integers. Are integers closed under addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division? Well, we know that they're closed under addition. If we add two integers, we're going to get an integer. Subtraction. They are also closed under subtraction because we can go to negatives and positives and zero. That's fine. So subtraction is good. Multiplication. Also closed. Division is not closed. Remember, anything under division is not closed as long as zero is included in the set. But also, if I divide two integers, if I divide four by seven, I just get four sevenths. So that is not an integer. So you'll do that for each of these. And then when you get to the end, you should go back to your Google form and click next. This will take you to your before you go. Go ahead and fill out your before you go and then submit your work on Google Classroom.